Greetings. Welcome to Crossroads Baptist Church for our November 3rd midweek devotion. Welcome to the month of November. How does it feel to be here at the end of the year already? It seems too quick. We're already in November. Hope you're enjoying the cooler temperatures. It's great to have you join us here at Crossroads Baptist Church for our midweek devotion. Before we get started, just a few announcements. Um, our Sunday school is back open. I encourage you to be a part of that. Our children's Sunday school will begin at 9.30 this Sunday. It, uh, we'll have a short devotion with our children, and then we'll uh, break off into our choir practice with our children. I encourage you to have your children here this Sunday and um, help them be a part of the church and, uh, and learn about worship and ministry and learn about being part of the body of Christ. I encourage you to be a part of that. We have a chili cook-off this month. Um, that is exciting. Uh, shoebox ministry this Sunday. Um, bring your um, your offering for that, a monetary donation for that, uh, given to the church, uh, market for shoebox ministry, and then we'll pass that money on to that uh, much needed ministry that we, uh, we help with each and every year. I encourage you to pray about that, what the Lord would have you to give. I know we've had a lot of um, offerings over the last month, but um, $25 can, can put together a nice um, um, grain, uh, flour, oil, things like that in a um, in a gift uh, box, and uh, it's, a, it's a worthwhile ministry. I encourage you to take part of that. I encourage you to be a part of our worship service this Sunday, Sunday school at nine thirty, worship at at ten forty five. The Lord has blessed us richly with His Word over the last few months. He has really just opened our eyes and opened our hearts. He, he's, he's put joy in the house of the Lord. And I can say I'm, I'm excited each and every Sunday to be a part of this ministry. And it's great to see what the Lord is doing in the lives of those who attend. I encourage you to be a part of that. Invite your family. You never know what an invite will do. And, um, and so many things are going on and, and with, our, with our church. And they're, they're good things. And I encourage you to come be a part of that. Before we dig into Romans chapter 12, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we love you. And we thank you so much for your faithfulness to your people, dear Lord, and your provisions that you give us each and every day. Lord, your blessings. Lord, I pray for our, our ministry here at Crossroads Baptist Church, dear Lord. I pray that we would continue to present the gospel as the truth that we stand upon, dear Lord. Sometimes it, uh, it is um, uncomfortable to hear the truth, dear Lord, but we enjoy hearing from your word and your, allowing your Holy Spirit to move in our hearts. Lord, be with our children's ministry at our church, dear Lord. I pray that you would help it to flourish and help it to grow, dear Lord. And remind us of the importance of having our children in church and setting that great example. Lord, I pray that you would encourage your, your people to be a part of this uh, congregation, to worship here, to, um, to give here, dear Lord, and to just love you, Lord, as you have loved the church. Thank you for those who support this ministry. Lord, thank you for this time that you're allowing us to look into your word and for the the, the, the technology, Lord, that we have to be able to present this, Lord. We love you, Lord, and we thank you for loving us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Paul, Romans chapter 12. We looked at verse 1 and 2 last Wednesday. <clears throat> There's no telling what I'm going to read to you because I, I don't have my glasses with me. But I, I want to look at verses uh, 3 through 8. And I, I want to look at a, a few points that Paul brings out. And I guess the first question and it is so ironic well it is so godlike that I, I was able to teach our senior adults Sunday school class this past Sunday and also bring the message to our congregation and both of those messages fall in line with what Paul is talking about here in chapter 12 verses 3 through 8 and the question is what is your spiritual gift what has God enabled you or blessed you gifted you with and are you using it? Are you using it to God's glory? And Paul goes on to say, he said, it's by God's grace, something that is given to us not because of our works, not because we necessarily deserve it, but because God sees us fit and he gives it to us and he expects us to use it. And that is the, the great question here that Paul is writing about. He has written about this before. First Corinthians uh, comes to mind right off the bat. And I think we'll, we'll share a little bit more about that as we get on with our devotion. Let's begin to read a few verses to kind of set the, the tone or the, the foundation of what Paul is talking about. And this is what he says. 
For by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the faith God has distributed to each of you. For just as each of us has one body with many members, it's talking about the church, and these members do not all have the same function. We all have different gifts. So verse 5, So in Christ we, though many, many members, form one body, the church, and each member belongs to all the others. We have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophecy is in accordance with your faith. If it is serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. If it is to encourage, then give encouragement. If it is giving, then give generously. If it is to lead, do so diligently. If it is to show mercy, do it cheerfully. So what is Paul talking about now? If we think back to our verses before, what we begin to see you know, is, is Paul is now showing, as he has been throughout this writing, is a love for people and a love for God and a love for service and ministry and evangelism. But now he takes a softer side as he approaches this. And it's, it's powerful that he takes about five verses here to speak about the gifts that God has given us. In other writings, 1 Corinthians, he, he chose several chapters to talk about such gifts. But so what we begin to think are the Christians at Romans perhaps were not as uh, careless with their gifts as um, we find the writing in 1 Corinthians. But nevertheless, it is something we need to be reminded of. So the word he's using here, he says this, um, Think of yourself with sober judgment. So when you when you hear that, you begin to think of an intoxicating type of lifestyle or an intoxicating type of behavior that needs correcting. And I believe this is this is relevant to our church today. There are so many people who are called, but so few who answer. And Paul is talking about the topic of pride, and not so much a boastful type of pride, but perhaps with God's gift that He gives us. Not to think of that as a prideful type type of job that I, I'm all this because church, we're nothing without Christ. And he cautioned the Christians at Rome not to think too highly of their selves in verse 3. Then he goes on to say in verses 4 and 5, he reminded of them that they, we are all part of one body. And that's the church, the body of Christ. And then in verses 6 through 8, he encourages us and he encourages the Christians in Rome to utilize their gifts for the benefit of the entire church. Whenever we do the things that God has called us to do, whenever we're a part of a group of believers, everybody benefits from our work, <clears throat> from the work that God has given us. And he calls on the reader, he calls on the Christians at Rome not to entertain a flamboyant type of attitude about the work that God has given them. Let's, let's make an example here to think about the pastor of the church, the, the, uh, the, the earthly physical leader of the church, he is not to think too highly of himself because he cannot do it by himself. Number one, he has to have the Holy Spirit. He's got to have God on his side. Number two, he needs a functioning church to help the ministry pro, um, progress and, and flourish as God would have it to do. Our lesson in our... Um, Sunday morning Sunday school was of Abram, Abraham, and Lot about not thinking too highly of ourselves, uh, being in, in communication with God. And that's what Abram did. He said, you know, Lord, just lead my way. And, and, and he tells Lot, you know, choose what you want. You know, I've got God on my side. And we have to think, whenever we think about our person personal self, that sometimes we do think more of us than we do others. I mean, it's up to us to keep ourselves healthy and well, uh, fed, nourished. So yes, sometimes we do think of ourselves as important, but the reminder here is, is to think about other people too. If you've got a gift that God has given you, there are people who need to uh, be ministered by you no matter what it is. And we need to be reminded that many Christians, these in Rome and even here today, are out of touch with what God has called us to do. And we need to be reconciled to what God has 
instilled in us and we shouldn't have a pridefulness about who we are. Is Paul the pride police? Well, no, he's not, but he's, but he's teaching and instructing because he is full of God's grace. He has acknowledged and accepted the gifts God has given him. He has accepted and acknowledged the call God has given him, and he's using it. Look at verse 3. For by the grace given me, Paul says, I say to every one of you, do not be prideful. Do not think too highly of yourself. What is this grace that Paul is talking about? We can look through Paul's writings, and I, I, I wrote down just a few here I want to share with you about the grace that God has given Paul and the grace that he's given us. He has equipped us. He equips the called. In Romans chapter 1 verse 5, it was the grace and apostleship to call the Gentiles to faith. We, we begin to think that it was just for the, the Jews in Israel, but it was so much more as we have learned through the book of Romans that through grace and apostleship, Paul was called to share the gospel to others, and the Gentiles benefited from that. In chapter 15, we'll look at later, verse 15, grace was given to be a minister of Christ to the Gentiles. So he's teaching God's word. Perhaps your gift is teaching. Well, then use it. You know, there's a, there's a saying that, that is very popular these days. It is a, a brand. It's, it's just do it. And if God has equipped us, just do it. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 10. The grace of apostleship was at work in him. We know through Paul's example that Christ, the Holy Spirit, was working a mighty work through him. We are enjoying his work and benefiting from his work today. Second chapter of Galatians. Grace was given to him. It was evident in the church leaders that he trained, evident in the the. Uh, the instructions that he gave the leaders of the church, Ephesians chapter 3, grace was given as a servant of the gospel to go and do what God has called him to do. I think about the book of Isaiah, uh, send me, Lord. I, um, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 7, grace was appointed to him by Christ. It was a superior, supernatural calling, and Paul is encouraging the believers today to take advantage of it. Interestingly, when he writes about grace given to him, he is making reference to the Christians in Rome that they need to apply what God has given them. And many times in Paul's writing, he says, I urge you. And this time what he's saying is, he says, you know, for his grace given to me, I say to every one of you. He's speaking to us today, to the believer. And he encourages us or urges us to do what God has called us to do. Look at verses 4 and 5. For just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not have the same function, we're all called to do something different. If we were all called to be the pastor, who would teach the Sunday school classes? Who would help in the fellowship hall when we have um, festive meals? And who would help with the children? And the great reminder here is this. Well, one of the great points of Christian education is this, that if one or two are doing all the work, burnout is likely to take place. And we have to be so careful that if everybody does their part, the, the likelihood of a burnout or overdoing it in Christian ministry and in the sharing of the gospel is very slim to none. God has a purpose for each and every one of us. Paul wrote in, in 1 Corinthians um, two years before this writing about um, the work that needed to be done. And he spends five verses here talking about um, discipleship, about being equipped and in the book of Romans. And then, in, as I mentioned, in 1 Corinthians, he spends two whole chapters talking about the very same thing. I believe it's chapters 13 and 15 or 12 and 15. And he's making the same type of reminder that we are the church and we're to be part of the church and you know we we can have so many excuses why we're not part of the church we've heard them all we've perhaps you're like me and we've we've made up these excuses for so long and paul's urging here is it's time to get back to work and it's time to do the things that god has called us to do the church is one body and we need to function as members within that body soberly 
in light of the grace assigned to each and every one of us doing our part. If everybody pitched in and did their part, it creates so much more joy in the, in the group of the believers. In verse 2, as we looked at last week, it shows a great commitment to the will of God, doing what God has called us to do. I made the mention this past Sunday, is the will of God always done? No, it's not, because man has the choice to do it or not to do it. God has a desire that we do his will, but we do not always do that. Being called and being used by Christ and accepting that and doing it is, is what his will is. Of course, that's what he wants us to do, but not everyone does that. We need to have a sober judgment about what God has blessed us with and let it be used in our life. But simply, all Christians do not, and we need to be reminded to function as the church and be part of the church. Paul reminds us in Romans chapter 6, verse 11, that we're all believers being in Christ are the words that he used. We need to do the things that God has called us to do. In Romans chapter 8 verse 1, therefore there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. It is joy for the believer to do what God has called us to do. Romans chapter 12 verse 5, so in Christ we are many from one body and each member belongs to the other. We're all in this together. Whatever your job is, whatever your blessing or gift is, just do it. Just be the the body of Christ and, and watch the, the functions of the church take place. I read a statistic today, and this is one reason why the emphasis over the last few months has been so much on our children and on our family is that when our children come to know Christ, about 20 or 30 percent of those parents who do not know Christ will come to know Christ by their child's involvement in church ministry. If the husband comes to church and he comes to, to a growing faith in Jesus Christ and accepts Jesus Christ and receives salvation, 85% of those men, those families of the men who receive Christ will come to know Christ also. We have got to evangelize our children and we've got to reach the, the parents. This is what pleases the Lord. Look at the last few verses. We have different gifts. And he goes through and he names these gifts. And the, the good thing here is it, the good and pleasing and perfect will of God for the church is to be the church and to use the gifts, the diverse gifts that he places within the church to use them as a functioning part of the body of Christ, to be the church. In verse 3, Paul mentions that the grace was given to him as, as well it is given to us so that every member is gifted in some way to serve the body of Christ. The book of Romans, the book of uh, 1 Corinthians, the book of Ephesians, and even in 1 Peter we see these gifts, not in any type of certain order, but I want to go through a few of them. Prophecy, service, teaching, encouraging, giving, leadership, Showing mercy. What all falls under showing mercy? Wisdom, knowledge, faith, praying, seeing God's miraculous powers at work. These are the types of gifts we need to be reminded of that God still bestows today. If our church is lacking in any of these, it's not because God has not given. It's because the equipped have not used what they have been given. Service in the local church needs to be done with a personal dedication, and that's what takes us back. It draws the big arrow from verses 3 through 8 back to verses 1 and 2. The great calling of the will of God that we need to be a part of today. And it is the spiritual gifts that God gives us that we need to be mindful of that we each possess. What is your spiritual gift today? Are you using it for the body of Christ you say, you know, Brother Jeff, I'd love for our church to have a, a young people's ministry that is bigger than it is now. I'd love to see more children at church. Well, let's ask ourselves this question. Are we each doing our part? You don't have to be a children's church or a children's teacher to help promote children's ministry. Young adult ministry will bring in children. Children's ministry is focused at encouraging and building our children up and hopefully encouraging the parents to come and be part of the church and not just part of the, um, the, the 
the main worship service, but to be a part of all the, the ministries here within a body of Christ. One thing we need to see is that if a man is called to be pastor, God equips that man. God will reveal it, that he has the gifts, and he will be um, functioning as that, as will he a Sunday school teacher. Uh, someone who sings, someone who encourages, someone who gives, someone who builds up in accordance with the grace given. In verse 6 is what Paul is saying. And several times throughout this uh, set of scripture, and I'm going to close with this because I think you get the point that we all have a calling, but we need to be using it. Paul mentions several things, seven ministries I want to point out here real quick. He mentions prophecy. We can, we can see a little bit more about this in 1 Corinthians chapter 14 at the very beginning, verse uh, 3, I believe, 1, 2, and 3. Ministry, um, literally the word means deacon or deaconing. It is a, um, a serving of a office, being part of the church, um, teaching. We see this in uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2. This is a very important responsibility uh, uh, exhorting, um, encouraging people to serve the Lord and to serve him faithfully. Giving, we can't do it without giving. This is a, uh, a motivation of the heart, a pure speaking of the Holy Spirit to man. See Acts chapter 5 for this, of the giving part of the ministry. Um, governing, ruling of the church. We have a function, we have a way that we do things that is proven, it is tested, and it works. And we need to adhere to those types of rules of, of having church. Does that mean we have to do things the same every Sunday? No, it don't. But it means church, Sunday school's at 9.30, church is at 10.45. We're open, the doors are open, the lights are on, and, and, and the, the, the preparation has been made to to help build the, the bridge for successful ministry. The Holy Spirit is, 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 is limited by some things, or there are some things that affect the Holy Spirit. Environment, attitude, emotions, these factors when, when concentrated upon prayer, they help aid the Holy Spirit. So we have a part to do as a church governing body to make sure that, that things are as accommodating or as rich as they can be in, in the body of, of this church. And then finally, um, showing mercy or sharing with those who are in need. And I think our church does a wonderful job of that. You know, God has called. He has called people to serve. And those that he has called are those that he equips for that calling. And it is by God's wonderful grace that we can have these types of gifts that he puts in our life. What is your gift today? Are you using your gift to serve the Lord? Thank you for joining me for this midweek devotion. I encourage you to be here Sunday. Come and see what God is doing. Come and experience the joy in the house of the Lord. Let's close in prayer. God, we love you and you're so good. Thank you for the reminder today that you call us, that you equip us, and that, Lord, you want us to serve. Lord, thank you for the cheerful giver, for the cheerful one who serves. Thank you for those in our congregation who do serve. Lord, if it's just one Sunday a month, Lord, I thank you for those who serve. If it's every Sunday, Lord, we, we, we cherish those who work so diligently for your, for your cause, Lord. Help us, Lord, to do what you have called us to do. Lord, we love you. Prepare us for Worship Sunday. I pray for our congregation right now, Lord, that you prepare our heart, prepare the word, and bring us in your house expecting. Lord, and we know we won't leave disappointed. Lord, thank you for all your blessings. Lord, be with our church, I ask in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you for joining me today.